Hi, I'm Becky and today I'm going to show you how to draw this staffy in coloured pencil. So I started off with a pencil line drawing and the reference proto was actually quite busy. It was the dog, I believe in a van, um, so there was windows behind it and things like that. It was on the seat um, and this was a commission so I was speaking to the people commissioning the artwork and they really wanted the dog just isolated, focus is on her. Um, so I did some digital art very, very quickly just to try and change the crop and isolate the dog by herself um, so that we were getting rid of all of those background distractions. So I'm just going through and trying to map out my main darkest shapes. I'm using a very light hand, um, making sure that I'm not flattening the tooth of the paper. You can still probably see a little bit the um, little white specks of the grain of the paper. That's fine, that'll get smoothed out later on. Uh, my main goal here is just to map out those shapes, um, give myself a bit of guidance for what goes where. I'm also being really careful not to go too dark in any areas where I'm going to need lighter colours. It's far easier with coloured pencil to put dark over light instead of light over dark, um, which is quite different from painting with oils or acrylics. With coloured pencil, like with watercolour, it's usually better to let the white of the paper show through and let that do the work for you, instead of trying to fight the paint or the pencil and add in lighter colours on top. Uh, you'll see later on that it is possible to add white over the top, um, but really that's only used for the very, very tiniest of details. Um, and most of your main shapes you want to be working from light and progressively up to the darker tones. Um, so yeah, that's just what I'm doing here, uh, mapping in those different lights and darks. I'm starting to get a little bit of colour temperature in there as well, um, looking at where the fur is warmer or cooler. Um, Staffies are really interesting to draw or paint actually because they have very flecked fur a lot of the time. Um, which adds a lot of interest, I think, to the face. Um, you get these little patches of warmer or cooler coloured fur. And it was my first time really trying to, in detail, draw a, a staffy. So it was quite interesting trying to get all of those little details. And they're the little details that will really make a pet portrait look like somebody's pet instead of any just generic staffy that you're drawing. Um, that owner will will know what exactly what their pet looks like. So that's always a little bit of a challenge with commissions, but I think that's also part of the fun. Um, especially when you get something like this that's so full of character, you want to be able to capture that, I think. So I think my camera stopped recording and I didn't notice for a little bit on the tongue, but it's very much the same process of looking at the main shapes, main colours. I'm underlaying some of those colours with a little bit of purple, a little bit of brown, you don't, for something like a tongue that you think of as being very pink, you don't want to necessarily jump straight to the pinks because you don't want a neon tongue or something like that. So I'm using some of those um, in the cooler areas of the tongue, purple to make the shadows or the warmer a brown or a reddish brown to get those shadows in. And that'll just be a bit more realistic than jumping straight to black for shadows, um, which I try and avoid in most areas, especially when it's a very colourful area. Um, you want to be a little bit preserving of your blacks and use them only where you really need them. So I am using them a little bit in the in the fur where it needs to be really dark, particularly in shadows er shadowed areas, I'm using it in the eyes. Um, I won't necessarily keep everything just a pure black. I'll be putting browns and blues in that black to make it a little bit more interesting and also to build up that dark tone um, with a little bit more depth. So all the time while I'm drawing this fur, I'm making sure that my pencil strokes are in the direction of the fur. Um, I don't want any weird marks that don't represent I am building up those colours and building up those textures, but I'm doing it in a very 
I'm killing two birds with one stone, really. I don't want to just block in a solid colour and then think, oh no, now I need to build up the fur texture. I'm doing both at the same time. So I'm really letting that work for me. Um, and that's true of any dog that you paint. But again, with this being a staffy, with them having quite flecked furs, you, you're going to get little spots of lighter colours and things like that. So you want to be careful to um, to make sure that you're not putting anything, any marks down that are going to be a distraction or to take out from the immersion of, of the piece. Um, you want all of those marks to be working for you. I'm coming through there with some Gansol. Um, it works the same as odorless mineral spirits if you have that or there's a few other coloured pencil solvents. Um, that's just a way of blending. It allows a lot more layers um, which will allow you to build up those tones and those that saturation um, with your coloured pencil without filling up too much of the tooth of the paper. It helps to get rid of too much of the graininess of the paper and um, yeah, it really helps to make the piece look more like a painting. I would probably consider this style of coloured pencil more similar to painting than you would necessarily drawing. Um, and certainly it can, can look that way. So I'm just making sure as well with that while I'm blending out, I don't want to blend out a really dark colour and then use the same brush over one of my lighter areas. Um, you need to, you can blend out a little bit and I blend, kind of softened the line of the nostrils there with the, with the brush, but you, you can't really move it like you would watercolour paint. The, that pigment is staying pretty much where you put it, it's just you're helping it to sink into that paper um, to give it a, a more realistic and painterly look instead of a, a grainy sketchy look. So my style of painting, whether it be with coloured pencil or paint or pastel, it's very much a layering process and it's not so much a put the right colour in the right place situation. There's a lot of layers, there's a lot of blending. Um, I will use different colours in the same same area to build texture or, or to build saturation or just to alter alter the tones a little bit. Um, it's not just a case of, okay, I have 120 colours in my set, that's all the colours I'll ever need. You can make thousands of colours by, by putting them together. Um, a little bit like you can with paint. You can't do it as much as with paint because coloured pencil is fairly, once you put it down, it stays there. But you, you can do it to some extent. Um, so similar to watercolour, you'll be able to almost glaze over different colours so you can see uh, near the nose I've got quite a lot of blue there that's in cooler light than the the rest of the face um, so it won't necessarily stay very blue but I definitely want those tones to show up um, because with very dark or black fur a lot of the time it's or nearly all of the time it's not black at all it's varying shades of blues and browns when you're painting, if you want to make a black, you would often use a blue and a brown. Um, and it's just variations of that, playing with the cooler and warmer tones of all of the colours, but of black as well. Um, now I've got the face pretty much finished, um, it's time to move on to the body. So I quite like, with coloured pencil, breaking it down into smallish sections. This is a fairly small piece anyway, so it's not too necessary. But still, it's nice to be able to get pretty much finished so that then you can judge the tones and the values for the rest of the piece from that pretty much finished section. Um, it's also a little bit of a confidence boost, especially if you're doing something like this that has a, a face. Um, getting those eyes and nose in and those areas of high contrast and of focus for the viewer, getting those looking really good is, for me at least, gives me the confidence to be able to bring the rest of the piece up to that kind of standard. You don't want one section to be amazing and then one section to be really rushed. You, a painting is only as strong as the weakest section, so that's not to say that 
you you need to spend hours and hours on on backgrounds and things like that when they're not necessary that's up to you where where backgrounds or other details are needed and where they're not but you don't want any of it to look rushed where you've you've spent less time on a section you want that to look intentional um, and you want to be, it to be obvious that it's intentional and again I'm going to blend that out making sure that I'm doing all of my dark areas at the same time um, because it doesn't really matter if you contaminate a dark area with a bit of dark pigment that's on your brush that's fine but you don't want to be contaminating the lighter areas um, and also keep in mind that when it's dry it will dry a lot lighter um, like hair I suppose paint looks or pigment looks a lot darker when it's wet and um, so just be mindful of that that it won't always dry quite as you expect it all the time so I'm just doing the finishing touches now and um, making sure that I'm including a few of those flecks that I was talking about that's quite common in staffies and um, making sure that the numbers on the collar look like numbers not just random squiggles building up the texture in the muzzle a little bit and making sure that all of those areas of the highest contrast are sharp and as contrasty as they need to be, I suppose. Um, and also I'm just going over the highlights, making sure they're all blocked in and, and they're showing up how they should be. Blending out with Gamsol again, making sure everything looks finished and also just increasing that saturation on the collar and making sure that I'm just giving the impression of a bit of the weave of the material on the collar. There are also some little black patches on her chest and tummy um, on the white fur so I'm gonna add those in pretty much last uh, just so that I can blend out that white fur without it being contaminated by the darker colours um, so this is kind of the last step because I knew it didn't need to be really dark. It was only a few strands of hair that needed to go in, but I wanted all of that base to be blended out first. So the very last thing that I'm going to do is add in her whiskers um, and just the very, very brightest bit. I'm doing this with a mixture of titanium white and coloured pencil touch-ups texture uh, from Brush and Pencil. And this is the only archival medium that goes over coloured pencil to add those white highlights which means it will not crack or peel off over time which if you were using either acrylic paint or um, a gel pen or gouache or something like that they're all water-based mediums and that's not a good idea to add it on top of an oil-based medium like coloured pencil so if you enjoyed watching me draw this staffy please consider liking and subscribing if you're not already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!